Okay, hi. You're listening to the Miss Chronicles. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, Dad. Welcome to episode 86 of the Infamous Chronicles. We are doing things a little bit differently as we sent Casey Moran out on the road to catch up with some of our favorite guests from the past. Tonight you're going to hear from Lenny, Jonathan Lipnicki, and Casey Abrams. This is the Infamous Chronicles. Turn down for what? Do you even know what's going on? This is the Infamous Chronicles. The Infamous Chronicles. Featuring the infamous Aggie Rocks, Casey Moran, Firefox, Pisa, The Jester, Michelle Stevenson, Mish, and Todd. Wait, what are we doing? Pardon my French, but you're an asshole. The infamous, the infamous, infamous Chronicles starts, starts right now. Right now. All right, welcome to the Infamous Chronicles. Um, doing something a little different. This time it's just me, Casey Moran here, um, and what we're trying to do, Jay, Augie, Scott, Colin, um, P. Sack, we have Michelle, we have so many people now working on Infamous Chronicles, so we're trying to kind of just touch base on some of our favorite guests from past shows, and this one is is a, a real treat. Um, my uh, my friend Jonathan Lipnicki, who you might remember from Jerry Maguire. Like Mike, Little Vampire, um, Stuart Little, just to name a few, uh, decided to be a guest on my, my show discussing depression. So what I did was interviewed that. It went great and then just kind of switched over and I wanted to, uh, just talk to him for like 10 minutes and just see what he's been up to and, uh, also, um, what new projects are coming up. So Jonathan, thank you so much for staying on, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So, um, when we talked last time, you were filming this movie with Denise Richards called Altitude, and then I just found out that that's coming out soon. Uh, can you tell us a little about a little bit about that, and also uh, what the release date is looking like? Um, I don't know what the release date is. I will let you know as soon as I know. Perfect. But hopefully, all you people can know and watch it. Uh, it uh, it should be out in the early in the new year. Perfect. Um, uh, LA, if you're in LA or New York, I believe it's gonna be a LA New York theater release, and then also worldwide VOD. Oh, very cool. Very cool. And, 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 and then right, I'm sorry? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. I, um, I didn't have anything else. Not only did you act in it though, you also produced it. How was that? That was interesting. Um, I didn't go to film school, so I wanted to learn on the job. Uh, and I learned a good amount on this one, and uh, I hope to learn more in the future. I love that. Um, and then you have a couple other things coming out too, right? Yeah, I have a uh, Loserville, which is out on Amazon, iTunes, all that good stuff, um, which was came out in theaters uh, recently, and then uh, now it's on all the platforms. So please check it out. I'm really proud of that one. I play a an extremely weird character. <laughs> please check it out because I want people to see this movie it is so heartfelt and, and adorable and fun and uh, I think people really dig it I love that um, and then you have a couple other things that you you, you don't know when they're going to come out but you shot a little bit ago like pitching tents with uh, comedians Jim Florentine Jim Norton just to name a few um, I think Kevin Farley's in that too yeah uh, both the, the other Farley brothers are in it, and they were they were really cool. They're really funny. I love that. Um, and yeah. I have no clue about that one. I wish I knew more. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I you were saying, saying, and you just you kind of shoot a movie thing. and it comes out, and you just like you don't yeah, know when it's going to come out. Shoot it, and you're like, well, now it's above my pay grade. Let's just hope this comes out. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was funny, funny premise, and fun to shoot. So can't wait to see what happens with that. Um, are you doing any, you know, I know that you've done some, some theater. Are you, are you either doing theater now or are you, are you looking at maybe doing a play in the near future? Well, I'm doing theater work in class. I mean, oh, very is, cool. you know, I mean, in acting class, they, we don't do any, uh, movie scenes or TV scenes. We do only theater. So constantly working on, on theater, technically I'm constantly working on it, but, uh, right. 
I don't really have any plans right now to do it. I'd love to if the right thing came up, but right now I'm really focused on uh, film and TV. Great. You know, um, I kind of wanted to to ask you this because you came up, your first big thing was was Jerry Maguire, and you so you kind of started in big movies. You did some TV, Jeff Foxworthy show, and a couple other things, but how much has TV changed now that A-list actors are going to TV and doing it on platforms like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime and all that? Dude, it's changed so much. It really has. Um, it's a completely different world, and the quality of TV is, is amazing right now, and there's great material to be had out there, and uh, that's why I really love I mean, a series would be awesome right now because the material is just amazing. And you've been uh, auditioning for for projects that are that are out now. What's great about what you're doing um, now, while you're you know kind of coming into your own as an adult actor, is you're taking on roles that are so unlike you and unlike roles that you've taken in the past when you were you know obviously a kid, but not roles that anybody I think would have seen you in um, you know as you as you grew up in this industry um, that is Hollywood. Is that a is that a fun thing for you to become like a character that's so unlike who you are as a person, or is that a, like a, a kind of a, a hard thing to take on and a challenge, or is it both? It's both. I mean, I uh, the, the roles are becoming more challenging because I mean I don't you know it's not like I necessarily am known for a wheelhouse right now of like staying a specific uh, area. So I mean it's just kind of random. Um, it's great. It's challenging. It's challenging myself. I like it. It's like having a separate career. You know. Right. Having a, you know, my second, whatever, half is more like a second career. Um, you know, one thing that that's interesting now, you see A-list actors almost take on commercial campaigns more than you'd ever see before. Meaning like Kevin Bacon and Rob Lowe and all these people um, are taking on like Peyton Manning, even Amy Schumer are people that don't need to do commercials, but they're taking on these campaigns because it's kind of fun and probably different. Is that something that you would maybe do, even though you're you're, you know, in Hollywood terms, beyond a commercial actor? Yeah, I did a commercial um, a few years ago for Audi because it was funny. Oh, I, I love that. Um, and I, I mean, I would, yeah. I mean, given the right circumstance, I definitely would. You've done in the past like a <laughs> web series and all that. Is that mm-hmm. something that do you do you think that webs? Because I feel like web series help you. Um, get ready for maybe a series on like a Netflix or a YouTube where it's more streaming based. Is that something that you would recommend to, to up and coming actors that might not have representation or ways to get on actual TV shows is like to maybe be involved in some type of web series? Well, I think it's all about quality, whatever you're shooting, you know, if you shoot something that, that showcases what you do. Um, I think that's the most important thing, whether it be a short, or web series, or, I mean, shorts and, and little films and stuff are going on YouTube, too. So, I mean, um, web series is such a weird term because if you really think about web series, House of Cards is a web series. Oh, that's on true. The web. Huh? Yeah. You know, I mean, all these all these streaming things are technically web series. Yeah. They're just, but people, you know, you know, scoff at the word web series usually. They're like, ah, that's like the thing you make with three in your three of your friends in the basement, you know, which yeah. you can be, but and there are a lot of those, but, uh, I mean, I, I think just creating material, whether it is, you know, a web series or a short, uh, it's all beneficial. I mean, you keep practicing and, and, and working on, uh, you know, filming in front of the camera. Right. No, that's a good point, man. Um, when you, when you think of, you know, other avenues, um, whether it be like, cause what's, what's amazing about what you do is not only are you great at acting and, and on, on all uh, aspects, when it, whether it's theater, TV, movies, commercials, but what you're great at too is your interviews. You you give really um, just they're they're very just polished and give really good answers and they're they're organic too. They're not just like stuff you have in your back pocket. You just kind of go go with the flow. Have you thought about doing? like your own podcast of like, you know, kind of giving your, you know, um, interpretation of, of Hollywood or maybe giving advice to other young, up and coming actors or something for the fans or even like a radio show. Or is that something where you're like, eh, I, I, I don't mind being a guest, but it's nothing that I want to pursue. 
Um, I, I don't know right now. I mean, I just I have, I have a few things going on that I really should give a lot of focus to. Sure. Maybe down the line, um, it seems like it'd be a fun idea. Yeah, you just have, uh, you know, I think that you have more going on than people realize. Because not only are you doing acting and you have your own personal stuff, but you have like martial arts. You're into things like that where I think it's really cool like to hear the kid from Jerry Maguire talk about like a UFC fight or, or some type of martial art event would be just like it's all right. It's just listening to you talk about it um, on other podcasts has been very intriguing to me. And so I don't know why I just threw that out there, but I feel like every time I interview you, I'm always like, why doesn't he have his own thing? But it makes sense. Cause unlike me, you're, you're a busy and working guy. <laughs> oh, stop it. I know you're, you're doing your grind with your, uh, with your comedy and that's awesome, man. Um, yeah, thanks, man. But, uh, yeah, man, I'm like, I'm like writing. I just finished writing a script with, uh, with, a with a part, uh, writing partner and, uh, figuring out stuff for that right now. There's just a lot of, a lot of stuff that I'm just trying to push out there right now. Okay. Well, I got, I got two more questions for you. One, um, you've worked with some of, some of my favorite actors of all time, uh, Tom Cruise, Michael J. Fox, um, you know, Cole Kidman, even you, you got to work with, um, you know, it was really cool. You got to work with, uh, oh no, sorry, not Nicole Kidman. I was thinking Gina Davis, which I think is one of the most underrated actresses of all time. She's really talented. Yeah. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's, a, she's a, a genius human being too. She's just really, really smart person. Um, yeah, I love that. Um, is there an actor, or actress or director that you haven't worked with yet that would just be on your dream list or are there a few? Yeah, I mean, after seeing, uh, so I saw La La Land last night. Oh, cool. Um, I saw a screening of it. And I saw, uh, and I saw a, uh, I mean, of course, I've seen Whiplash. I'd love to work with Jamie and Chazelle. Oh, very cool. Very yeah. cool. Um, yeah, like, Whiplash was so good. I just recommended it to someone who hadn't heard of it. And I was yeah. like, man, J.K. Simmons is a beast. And I'm so glad he got his due finally. Um, yeah, and um, I mean, he, Damien knows how to make the goddamn movie, man. Right. And, uh, with, with, I mean, it's just, he's such a solid filmmaker. Um, for me, that'd be definitely a dream come true. I'd love to work with him. And is there like an actor, or actress that you think you would vibe with really well, um, like on screen? Or is that kind of like you'll just work with whoever? I mean, I, I, you know, I'm at the mercy of whatever I audition for right now, but, um, there are a lot. There are a lot of people. Like, yeah, like Gosling, I'd love to work with. I think he's great. Um, DiCaprio. Sure. Uh, I have a huge crush on Scarlett Johansson. So, I mean, if I worked with her, I'd love that. <laughs> I feel like you would have a good on screen romance with a couple, like, uh, actually. Like, a, you yeah, know who's. Would... Uh, she's from Simi Valley, and I think she's an underrated actress, and she's going to get her uh, Oscar soon. But Shailene Woodley is like. Somebody who's so talented that I think. Oh, she's super talented. And she seems like the coolest person. Yeah, she's like a hippie dude. You know, like with she, all her yeah. Activism and right. I, I'm really impressed by her. Yeah, and uh, Brie Larson kind of came out of nowhere. She did a, a movie that my friend, my brother's friend, uh, Asher produced called Short Term Twelve, and yeah, uh, she was she just won her Oscar and she's amazing. Uh, but you have that like you could feel like you could work with them or Anna Kendrick or. You know, uh, yeah, Emma definitely. Stone. Yeah, Anna's really tough. Man. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people I'd love to work with. Um, comedically, man, I'd love to, you know, I, I think he's really underrated comedically is, uh, Zach Efron. Love oh, yeah. He's really funny, man. He really he's, is. I really get a kick out of him. He's a guy like, uh, Channing Tatum that I think nobody thought they had the comedic chops that they have. Um, yeah, definitely. And when, you know, when you see them, you're like, you just think, oh, the heartthrob, all these girls like him, but like, they seem so funny on and off uh, screen that they just seem yeah. like really fun people. They also, yeah. um, you know, are good to their fans, which I love. Um, all right. So yeah. last question is, um, do you have any advice for somebody that's, that's looking into maybe becoming an actor or just type of artist? Because nowadays, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but there seems to be more opportunities out there when you can just kind of take your phone and do, YouTube videos or um, kind of almost anything to put content out there the way social media and technology is. Yeah, I mean, I would say if you if you really love it, go for it. But you got to figure out if you are willing to 
go through everything that is, you know, not working and uh, struggling to to accomplish this goal. And if you are, then, I mean, get you can kind of get started, I feel like, anywhere, man. Um, I always recommend acting class, but uh, right. I mean, you can make your own stuff. You can do it all, it all at the same time. But uh, I think an acting class is really important. Very cool. Um, we talked about it on Discussing Depression, but to find you on Twitter, it's jlipnicky, right? Yes. And then Jonathan Lipnicki on Instagram to see pictures of my dog. <laughs> <laughs> you do have a yeah. great Instagram, man. And I th- it looks like we might have a mutual friend in comedian Kate Quigley. Cause, uh, oh, my God. I, I fucking love Kate. She's the best, I was right? I her jokes. I was texting her jokes uh, during the Conor McGregor UFC. Oh. I was texting her like jokes the whole time. We were making fun of like things happening. Oh, I love her. She, she's been on a couple of my shows, man. Next time I... I have her on a show in Hollywood. I'll definitely invite you out. Um, Let me know. I love, yeah, I she's, love Kate. I've been, we've been meaning to hang out. I did her podcast a while back with uh, Oh, Date Fails? Yeah. Oh, so cool, man. Um, I'm she's, not famous uh, enough yeah, to get on that. She's the best. She's, she's great. So funny. She's, she's one of my favorites and, uh, to, to be as, as, uh, hot as she is, she's like the kindest person. So it's really exactly. cool. Exactly. So, I think it's because <laughs> she's from her. Ohio. She's so I, I texted her. Last time, so I ran into her at coffee bean, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and I, maybe I shouldn't tell the story. But I thought one of her friends was really hot, so I was texting her about that too. Oh, that's hilarious! No, she's <laughs> yeah, she's so honest she's about. So she's just a really cool person, and uh, yeah. I reached out to her because I saw her at the comedy store, and I was like, "Listen, I probably can't book you, but because you're you know kind of out of my uh, you know not pay range, but like because I I try to take care of comics, you know, out of pocket, but like." She's like, listen, I just want to get long sets. So I've been trying to put these showcase shows together. And I was like, ah, Kate's like above, you know, um, mm-hmm. me, I thought. And she's like the nicest. And every time I reach out to her, she's she's always like, I would love to do your shows. I always have so much fun. And she's like really means it. She's a really good person. Um, mm-hmm. And it's awesome because every time I see there's like there'll be like pictures of like, you know, that, you know, that either I'll post or she'll post. And I'm like, it looks like Jonathan knows her. This is awesome. I'm going to bring that up to him. Um, mm-hmm. that's awesome. And then, uh, and then you have a couple things coming out, um, altitude, uh, pitching tents, um, and loserville is out right now. Correct. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming back on the infamous chronicles. And, um, we're eventually going to get a, a, a dual episode of you and Danielle Savory, who she was in on the recording of your episode and she didn't want to jump out of her chair cause she didn't. She didn't want to chime in because she's so kind. But she, yeah. you, were, you were talking about, you know, having to switch over agents and all this stuff. And she was like, I can relate yeah. to that. And I had to bring it up. I'm like, why didn't you bring it up? And then so it, it so Jay and I talked and we, we if you know, if it works out in your guys' busy schedules. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd, lo- to- I'd love to. Plus, I'd love to congratulate her. By the way, right after, for people who don't know, right after she did her episode. She has just been killing it, dude. Right. She's doing uh she's doing Tyler Perry's show and a, and a couple other like Lifetime movies and she's uh, you'll you'll be happy to know she's one of those people that um doesn't change. She just uh just like you, super humble. I text her and one time she did a movie called uh oh my god, Adulterers where she's naked in it and I went to a a, a bar in Calabasas called or Woodland Hills called Rabbit Hole. Swear to God, dude, I walk into this bar and I'm getting a, a beer and I look up and they're playing that movie, but that movie at the time that, uh, she's naked and I just texted her a picture. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Hey, I, I was, I see your tits right now. <laughs> and she, <laughs> she, oh was like, she was like, she was like, Oh my God, they're playing that at the bar. And like, that shows you how cool she is. She's not mad that I took a picture of uh, a TV she's just, that yeah, has she's it. just surprised they're playing it at the bar. Yeah, she yeah, ex- um, exactly. It was yeah. awesome. Um, but yeah, we'll but definitely yeah, get I you mean, guys she's on. She's just been having such a great year. Um, I would love it. So funny, right before uh, all that happened, uh, we were talking because me and her both tested for a pilot in the same week. No way. Like, I, yeah, that's what we talked about. Uh, we talked about this... Uh, you know, when I, when I saw her and, uh, then it turned out she booked a pilot, but then that pilot didn't get picked up, but then she booked the Tyler Perry series, series right after. So it's like, she just like, this year was going to be her year regardless. It's pretty cool. She, you know, and then she had a few episodes on some other TV shows and stuff. She's, 
I mean, man, she took off right after right after uh, the podcast episode. I think it's because she met you that she took off, man. You're like a good luck charm. I think they call. I mean, you, you should yeah. just let her know that. Give me, you know, I'll take I'll take like seven percent. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna send her this. Uh, I'm gonna clip this part off and send it to her. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we'll get that going soon and uh we'll we'll hang out with Kate and we'll just have a good time and, and thank you so much for always being so kind to me and to to us, man. It means a lot, seriously. No problem. Thank you for always thinking of me. Yeah, thanks, man. Congratulations on everything and uh please check out Jonathan on Altitude Loserville um and pitching tents coming out soon and follow him on social media and uh reach out to him as long as you're not a hater, because we don't need that negativity. Um, all right. Thanks again. And, uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jonathan. All right. That was the infamous Chronicles little, uh, catch up with Jonathan Lidnicki. All right. Thanks, Casey, so much for giving us that interview. We're going to take a quick break here and then Casey hits the road again and catches up with a special guest, Linny, and a surprise guest that just dropped in on his interview. And, uh, I'm really excited for you to hear that. So we'll be right back after this break. You're listening to the infamous Chronicles. This, this is, is first. Take a big step back. The, the infamous, infamous Chronicles. Chronicles. And literally fuck your own face! The Infamous Chronicles. All right, tonight's episode is brought to you by Audible. If you want to go ahead and grab yourself a free audio book, they have over a million to choose from. And we want to give you one for free. So go to audibletrials.com slash TIC. You get a free book and you get a 30-day trial. And on top of that, we're going to be giving out a $50 Amazon gift card. This is what you have to do. This is our contest right now. Go on to social media, and, uh, tag us in the post, and then hashtag TIC Topics. What you're going to do is you're going to give a suggestion for a topic that you want to hear the team talk about, and we'll pick the best topic. Not only will your topic be included in an upcoming episode, but you win yourself a $50 Amazon gift card, compliments of Audible. So again, that's audibletrials.com slash TIC. Enjoy the rest of the show. Now, what did you say? Back to the infamous Chronicles. Uh, I said you look shitty. All right, Casey Moran here. I did a solo uh, field trip for the infamous Chronicles. Um, not because they didn't want to come, but just because I didn't tell them, and that's my fault. Um, but I got a chance to see friend of the podcast and former guest, Lenny, and she killed it. Um, at the Hotel Calif- Cafe, Hotel Cafe, Cal- did I say California, <laughs> Hotel Cafe, <laughs> Hotel Cafe in uh, Hollywood. Um, so, Lenny, how do you feel about tonight? It's super cold out right now, so it's let's like paint a picture. Yeah, it's windy. It's surreal. Uh huh. Um, it was it was really fun. Yeah. Um, you played this before, I right? Played, I had my first release show on the main stage here. Oh, that's um, but I like they opened the second room recently after closing down. Room it's five. very intimate. Yeah, I love so it. I've done a couple like smaller solo shows here. I'm, I'm singing back up for a friend on Friday. Wow! So I mean, very it's, cool. It's it's one of those iconic yeah. spots though. That some of my favorite songwriters have right. started here. I mean, like yeah, yeah. Relis, Ingrid Michaelson. Katie no way! Yeah, Ingrid Michaelson did this. Yeah. I love Not this. at this stage because the right. just open, but this venue. I feel like any of them would play the stage because doing comedy. I've played big rooms, but I like the intimate ones mm-hmm. because I feel that not only does your art pop more because you can hear it in terms of the acoustics, but also you kind of connect with the audience more. And um, that was really cool. And I asked you uh, because I didn't see you bring anything in of your own and they have their, their own like house equipment. Mm-hmm. And I was like, because you seem like a creature of habit. Somebody right. likes to play their own you know, <laughs> instruments. So I was like turned to you and I was like, is it hard to play somebody else's? And you said, no, this is actually a good one. So, you know, sometimes it is, but um, you get three to four songs when you have a, a showcase like this. Mm-hmm. How do you decide, like, what is your, you know, like, process of deciding what songs you're going to play and in what order? Yeah, I mean, for me, I really like, if it's going to be short and sweet, you're going to have some people who've heard them before. You're going to have people who've never heard them before. I like being able to pick three songs that I feel super comfortable with. Right. <laughs> have good stories right so you get to hear the difference between a full band show and something like this is I have a little more time to talk about the song right um and so I feel like that allows me to connect with the audience in a different okay. way I like um, that and and they're also songs that I've played for a while so I get to do something new with them every time I play them that's what I noticed because I <laughs> right because I asked you so backstory of before we even did our podcast interview last time 
I met you at Cal State Fullerton, which is where I went to college. Mm -hmm. And every I go once a year just to like live in my past and just in, and walk around campus and, and remember the good times and all that nostalgia. Um, but I, every time I go there, I see who's playing in the on-campus pub to see, you know, oh, is there anything going on today? And that day that I randomly went there, uh, you were playing, and I looked yeah. you up, and you had a bunch of YouTube stuff. I'm like, this is going to be so much fun. And it was, like, even better than I thought because they brought, like, pizza, and you were, like, so <laughs> cool to fans. And, like, and then I, I got an album that day, and I remember, like, playing it on the way home, and I was like, I told my friend Jay, I was like, we need, because we interviewed different comedians and other people at that time, but we hadn't had a musician on yet. Mm -hmm. And you were the first one, and since we've had multiple. And so it was cool because listening to you today, I was so into the CD that uh, I knew the words this time. And yeah. so it's always cool to like, but like you said, you put a spin on every right. song, right? which I thought was really cool. Is there, because like as a comic, we go to open mic night. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to you and you said, you also do that. Is that where you kind of work stuff out at open mics? Or is that more of like a, you know, you do that behind closed doors? No, I think it's a it's a good process because you never know who's going to be there. There right. might even be like one person there. Sure. So why not try out some new stuff? If you don't like it, you won't do it again. If you right. like it, maybe you'll keep with that. I remember right. seeing James Taylor back in North Carolina. And even oh he... God. Did, he like changed the words of some of his songs, you know, he's no been way. playing them forever. So, well, cause you got to switch it up. Like as a comedian, I can't, if I do an hour special or, you know, some type of tour, I can't do the same stuff as I did four years ago, right. but journey is going to always be playing. Don't stop believe. So yeah. it's a weird thing <laughs> where, you know, you, you hone this craft and you get this stuff that works and then you have to switch it up. Right. But, um, what's great. Oh, you know, another thing tonight that I thought was really cool is you draw, You told me beforehand, and then you went on stage and you said you have a new single coming up. Mm -hmm. um, we like to kind of not only catch up to see, you know, what's been going on, but also anything new to promote. So when is that coming out, and how can the fans get it? Yes, it's coming out December 16th. It's going to be online on iTunes and Spotify, the major stores. And I think I'm going to do a little video. I'm really? I'm hand directing. Is that right? We're doing a little video for so it So Jeff on is producing now, and you're directing. You guys just <laughs> changed so much in, like, the eight months since oh I've God. seen you last. It's amazing. But it's a song that we – It's I wanted to put it out right before the holidays because it's about going home oh, and you know this. when you go to the bar and you see maybe your <gasps> first love do I ever <laughs> <laughs> you remember them uh -huh. as that high school version not oh yeah that's now. that's a great point and so it's called Alone Tonight and it's about going back and remembering that it's very nostalgic right um, so it's I like wanted, me going back to my college yeah I get it. exactly so I wanted to put it out around the holidays even though it's not a Christmas song because right, right. I wanted it to be something that people could listen to on their drive home or their flight home for the holidays right. and just like we transport themselves. Sure, time. sure. Well, I mean, during it's like it's good that it's not a Christmas song, and here's why: um, <laughs> because you're not discriminating against any other holiday. There you go. You're just kind of doing it at a time where everybody comes together. Yeah. So whether that be Christmas or Thanksgiving, or Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, that's what December and November, the end of November and early January is all about. It's coming like together. Coming together. Exactly. And, and you're from a town in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking to you. I was like, I'm obsessed because I want to go to Wilmington. That's right. Because One Tree Hill is filmed there and Dawson's Creek there. And yes. inside, I'm like a 14-year-old girl. <laughs> uh, you told me something that I don't even think we touched on last time. We might have. But you were in, like, an episode of One Tree Hill. And, oh, yeah. it, like, and it made me laugh so hard. And you I can see it. me. I'm standing behind Coach Whitey. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny is, like. You were actually. Chad Michael Murray, like, goes to shoot the winning Goals. Right. Wait, that's, it's it's not like a basket, goal. winning basket. Yeah, yeah. I remember <laughs> that episode. Um, yeah. And he, the, I mean, the actor Still goes in the net. didn't make it, <laughs> but they had I to get someone else to go. Because James Lafferty actually played basketball. Chad right. Michael Murray, not an athlete. And he and did. I I told you that he came into a room when I was. You like, sure did. And I was like, oh my god, I have to say something interesting to him. So you I was did like, tell me North Carolina. Yeah. And, and I feel like everybody. Team. Oh, I love that. Um. Okay, so I'm because our podcast is so open, I'm going to admit something that happened with us because because yeah, I don't care, whatever. So I did uh, – you, you had a show here that was, like, for charity, and I couldn't make it. But I was like, listen, I'll get two tickets, and then you just put it at Will Call, mm -hmm. and then that way so two nice of your fans – Thank you. And that's not why I brought this up, by the way. <laughs> I brought this up, and you'll hear why, fans, Jay especially. Um, so – 
I wanted to show you that I bought the ticket. So the only way I realized it at the time was I could screenshot on my iPad. Now, the thing I didn't realize until after I sent it is that it showed what I had been previewing beforehand. <laughs> and I totally had like a free porn site up. And I sent it and I knew, I know how observant you are already. And I was like, there's no way if I don't uh, bring this up that either A, you hadn't already brought it up or B, you know, um, you had, you know, you were already probably turned to Jeff and was like, oh my God, did you see this? And then you I you called yourself out. I did. I called myself I out. I didn't even notice it. I called myself. Well, now I now I didn't know that, but I called myself out because I was like, it's better as if you like it's like if something embarrassing happens and you make fun of yourself first before anybody else can just get it done with. And you were like, I didn't even see that, and well, it made I me think laugh. It should so. Become part of your stand up. Yeah, you did say that, and it's a good move. But here's the thing: all of my fans, if you want to call them that, know I'm a creep and know that I'm I'm just this sexual deviant. So like, they'd be like, "That's all you got." So oh. like, it makes it's funny because who you are and you're classy, and our friendship was nothing but you know I met you and had you on the podcast and we chat here and there. So it's just it's funny because of who I am and who you are, and how you did not know that side of me, and then you had you know. But regardless, uh, I wanted to get that out of the way for the fans. Um, <laughs> before I let you go, is there anything besides your single that's coming out that you can uh, promote again? Um, is there anything else, whether it's shows, albums? Oh, yeah, you have your album on vinyl now. Oh, yeah. They just Because uh, we won the Gentleman and Summer contest. Hi. Hey. Casey, I love this. Casey Abrams just walked up. Oh, this is huge. I love. My name is Casey. Also, no I shit. love. How I love this guy already. Hey man, we're doing a. We're doing a podcast interview with her. Do you want to plug your stuff and get get some fans? Duh. I love this guy. How can people find you on Instagram or Twitter or Yeah, it's going on right now. Oh, how great is this? Oh. Uh. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Uh, no, don't uh, apologize. <laughs> Casey's Casey Basie. Casey. Casey's amazing. He's like the real deal. You're I love it. Yeah. No way. How can I put the bass on it? And that's uh -huh. pretty fun. How can people find that one? I don't know. We need to do a video for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's coming soon. Uh, You've been touring by yourself or with? With postpartum jukebox. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Do you have anything coming up that you can promote real quick? Like a uh, album that somebody can promote? Oh, yeah. The Hotel Cafe, uh, 10 minutes from there. What's next? Uh, I have a show in uh, Canyon Club on the 15th. No way. It's a gore. So my, my, our fan base is Simi Valley. So it's Ventura oh, County. So we got that. Oh, damn. Yeah. We'll, hit, right. we'll, have to, we'll have to get people out there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love building? this guy, Casey. This is the best. Casey's <laughs> just... They just... Right away. It's an instant connection. I love it. Um, well, I think anyway, that's going to do it. No, 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 no. I'll see you in a second. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love this because, they, well, okay, let me let me bring this up. You know, you came from North Carolina. You moved to L.A. to pursue music. You have a song about how L.A. can be fake. But when you get to an intimate setting, like a place like Hotel mm -hmm. Cafe, I almost like California again, um, <laughs> it, it's really cool to see, just like comedy, you – you're just another musician and you guys are a family together, even though you're pitching different things, there's some type of like togetherness camaraderie, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, did you have that in North Carolina or, with other musicians or is it a different vibe out here? Cause it's just like, I was telling Jeff, I turned him, I'm like, man, this lineup is killer. Like as a, as a stand up producer, I always look for like, Oh, is there a couple duds in the lineup? And it's just killer, it's killer, it's killer, it's killer yeah, yeah. following different people. But it's like, there's no competition. There. Like you, you walked off stage and the next artist was like, great job. And then yeah. supported you. And that, that is what it, I think I, LA gets. I, th I don't think they get enough credit for. There yeah. is a lot of support and people think it's fake, but there are real people maybe because they're not from LA, but they yeah. come out and they support each other. And I think that's amazing. I think it's especially here. Because yeah. This, this location is so supportive of singer songwriters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. My my friends and family were always supportive in North Carolina, but I always was looking for. I never felt like I totally fit in until I came to a the place next thing. where nobody fit in and they were okay with it because right. that's what LA is about and embracing yeah, yeah. differences. And well, it's hard to grow in somewhere where it's not as uh, known for right. entertainment. Um, okay, so you're on Twitter and Instagram is just Linny, L I N N E Y, and then official, official right? Yeah, Got it? official. Got it. And then wait, so how can fans? Because I was trying to buy vinyls tonight, and Homegirl over oh, here yeah. in the beanie did not bring them. I didn't. Okay, so they're on my website, okay. official.com. If you go to merch, yeah, 
I'm going to extend the sale. I was doing free shipping. Cyber Monday sale. It was my fault. I, the store was messed up. I had to enter some like tax okay. information. But so they, so if somebody just goes on it and gets it now, you're going to, that's I'll really cool. I'll still honor that. Yeah. Very cool. So if you do that, don't do this in March because you listen to this uh, in December. It's, it, this is only like a December sale. This yeah, we'll like call for, it like Christmas. Christmas holidays. sale. Holidays. <laughs> um, is there any shout outs that you have? Uh, what's your favorite ginger beer, by the way? Let's end on that. Bundeberg? Bundeberg. Yeah, so yeah. I got one here, and it's really good. It's like cock, cock and bowl or something, <laughs> which is, you know, fitting for me. But I, uh, I I turned to you, and I was like, this is good, but I'm a Budenberg guy. Um, <laughs> but I thank you so much for taking of the time. Of course, thanks for coming. Of course. I'm going to send this to Jay, and he's going to – he's not. there's not going to need any editing. The Casey stuff's great. The porn stuff's phenomenal. <laughs> Hotel California, keep it in there. Um, thank you so much. And we, you know, eventually down the line, we would love to have you again. Yeah. And I told you, I was like, I want to, I'm not at your level in terms of like talent, of course, but <laughs> I want to set a time or just a show where, cause I always have to go on before musicians, a, a lot of venues. Mm-hmm. So I want to set a show cause there's like a place called the Virgil. That's really mm-hmm. cool in Silver Lake and to do stand up there and then, cause I'm doing showcase shows yeah. for comedians, like industry can come cool. out. But I want to have, like, musicians afterwards because that's just, like, because they're all it. hanging out. And, let's make it happen. Yeah, let's get that going. And thank you so much. Um, let's go back inside. It's fucking cold. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Casey, for getting out there. Sorry, everyone, for the sound of that win. But uh, although it was not ideal, there was no way we weren't going to air that episode because we are huge Lenny fans on the show. And freaking Casey Abrams dropped in, which is crazy. Uh, you guys may recognize him from American Idol, but he's done a ton of great music after that. And uh, as Casey told me, he was the nicest guy. Uh, so we were really excited to have that surprise drop in. I guess one of the benefits of living in Los Angeles is you never know what you're going to get. Uh, so that's going to do it for us. That was our first field trip set of interviews um, where we were really excited. So we want to thank Jonathan Lipnicki, Linny, and Casey Abrams for participating in this catch-up episode. Uh, who else would you guys like to see us catch up with from who are some of your favorite guests? Hit us up on Twitter at RealTIC Podcast and let us know. Also, I'd like to make a very, very special announcement. We're so excited to let you guys know about this. Next Saturday, March 18th, we are world premiering a brand new podcast series. That is right. We are introducing a new member of the Infamous Works family. This will be our fifth project in total and our uh, third uh, sister show. Um, And it is called... The Taco Truck of Destiny. Uh, We are going to drop a little preview of the show on this coming Friday to let you guys kind of hear what's going on, what the show is going to sound like. Uh, So we're really excited about that. We might even do it earlier. I don't know. Maybe it'll be before Friday. Uh, You're hearing this on Tuesday. So who knows? But we want you to get pieces of it as early as possible. Uh, This show is the geek side of the Infamous Chronicles, and it is hosted uh, by a two people that have appeared on the show before. Wade was in our great comic book episode that we did, um, which is why he rolled in perfectly to this. Um, and the other one is Junkie. Uh, so the two of these guys, they are huge nerds, great dudes. They were really excited about this opportunity. They were going to be covering comic books, action figures, uh, film, television, a lot of nostalgia, a lot of pop culture. So if that is your thing, then please tune into this new side of our show. The Taco Truck of Destiny premiering on March 18th everywhere you hear podcasts. Um, Also, give a listen to our other shows. That is Her Chronicles, which is the female side of the infamous Chronicles discussing depression, which is Casey Moran's mental health show and Marching Robots, which is myself, Augie Rocks and former infamous Chronicles team member, the maestro, just doing an old nostalgia show. So our little family is expanding. We're super proud of it. We also have a couple humongous announcements to make in the upcoming weeks here. So don't miss anything. Also, last but not least, we are giving away a motherfucking Nintendo Switch. That's right. Infamous Chronicles is going to be giving away a Nintendo Switch. Tune in all month on our social media to find out how you can win it. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Real TIC Podcast, and uh, we're going to be dropping details on it. I actually just got mine. It is freaking amazing. So if you want to win yourself a Nintendo Switch, you've got to get involved, baby. That's all it takes. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great night. This is the Infamous Chronicles. If 
I was you, I'd wanna be me too. I'd wanna be me too. I'd wanna be me too. If I was you, I'd wanna be me too. I'd wanna be me too. I'd wanna be me too. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Infamous Chronicles. Our show is produced by Jeremy Elder. Talent acquisition is done by Casey Moran and operations directed by Paul Sinecori. This show is copywritten Infamous Works, LLC, 2016. All rights are reserved. All of our guests appear signed via waivers. We don't own the rights to any of the music featured on our show. We are just fans of it. Visit us at infamousworks.com or call our offices at 844-4INFAMOUS.